Welcome to Let's Play Every Day, where you've already missed conversations about breakfast bars, cats, <laughs> uh, all sorts of things. And, and we're just getting started with Minnesota State Senator Carla Bigham, uh, the man, the myth, the legend, uh, Daryl Thompson, and of course, America's everyday comedian, C. Willie Miles, all brought to you by Northern Lids. Check them out at northernlids.com. Simply the finest headwear that money can buy. Uh, you guys, we have a half hour, and we could probably go a half hour on any one of these subjects that we have here today. There was so much that happened here this weekend. Uh, UMD played for the Women's National Hockey Championship and lost it in the third period. Um, I'm going to be Gustavus played for a national championship and lost it in overtime. Um, the Gopher men get seated. They've got the defending national champions after dropping the Big Ten title game to Michigan uh, over the weekend. Those aren't the stories we're even talking about. We haven't touched the girls' basketball tournament. The boys' basketball tournament's been seated. Um, uh, Chad Greenway's got a girl, uh, Daryl, you may be familiar with. Uh, she's eight, eight, eighth grade and playing at Providence Academy. And I think she's already Ooh. scored over a thousand points and won her first state title as uh, part of that. And I think that she's one of the next phenoms uh, on the way up as far as uh, women's basketball is concerned. But uh, we've got the Vikings to talk about. We've got the, uh, the Wild made another trade. The Wolves begin a really interesting stretch of games tonight. And it's the Twins who steal the headlines with a signing on Saturday night of Carlos Correa, who was looking for $300 million. And uh, the <laughs> Twins gave him 105 And more important than that, an out clause. Uh, and All after right. the season is concerned. So I'm just wondering, you guys, uh, the Twins had, uh, the front office have been taking kind of a little bit of a, a shellacking on, on social media for not doing anything. And now they've done mm -hmm. something. What do you think? Well, I think it's great. I think it's absolutely great. When I heard about it, saw it come across the wire, and thought about it this morning, kind of preparing for the show a little bit. I think, you know, we we in Minnesota kind of like, oh, we're just going to take, you know, the leftovers. We're goulash eating people. You know, we're just going to have this stuff. So, you know what? You know, let's go after a great player. Let's have some opportunity here. So I'm um, I'm excited about him um, being a twin and being a, uh, you know, being part of our Minnesota uh, twin community here. I really think it uh, has shored up our defense, and that's great. It's all fine and dandy, but I really think the pitching is something they – they have to uh, continue to build on. I think they've made some transitions uh, or transactions, and and I think they're talking about a couple others. But um, I mean, I I mean, I guess if you have such a stellar defense, you don't need an offense. Might be their thought, but I don't think that's a smart <laughs> one. <laughs> and um, and uh, I don't think that's the way you want to go. I don't think that wins championships. And so um, I hope that you know as this week progresses and as you know the preseason. Uh, kind of goes through here and, and training camp and stuff. They, they grab some people that are really going to um, shore up that, that pitching and, you know, they've always lacked consistency and um, mm -hmm. the front office has always taken this little shellacking on, um, you know, whether it's in the media or social media, since uh, I've been around really on the, the lack of uh, deep pockets to bring some of these clutch players in. And um, so let's see if this, if this sticks and, um, it's, a, it's kind of an odd way of how it hand, uh, took place and transpired, but great, fantastic player. And I think it provides clarity for, for the infield, especially. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm with you, Carla. But at the end of the day, uh, I'm going to tell you the same way I did with the Timberwolves. Let's play and then we'll see. Yeah. Because it doesn't matter, you know, what you did down in, in Houston. What matters is what you do here. You know what I mean? Yep. And I think the Twins, you know, we. this is one team that I, I, I agree with you on, Tim, is that when it comes to sports, this, this team will break your heart. <laughs> uh, they, they do it, I think, in an epic fashion, even better than the Vikings. I mean, because they'll start out so hot, you'll be like, oh, my God, we look like we're going to be a pennant. No, we made, we are struggling just to stay in the league. <laughs> you know what I mean? Is so I don't know what this I don't know what this means. I mean, I, I don't know this cat. Uh, I did a deep dive when I got my thing yet last night for the script, and and all I looked at it's a pretty decent batting average. I mean, it's, I don't see the heroics, you know, that everybody's talking about. But I don't know why he think he's worth three hundred million dollars. But somebody will pay him. But at the end of the day, well, we gave him a hundred million, so hopefully he's worth that. So. And he's got an out, like you say, he has an out clause. He, he can get out that's the next year. But we got a nice, you know, we got a nice player, you know, and that's that's all I that's all I can say about him. He doesn't 
he doesn't stand out as the best player in the major leagues. That's that's for sure. I don't. I'm sorry. I don't. He was the number one pick in the 2000 draft, taken ahead of his new teammate Byron Buxton. So we have two legit, you know, MVP yep. uh, candidates, at least for the time being, up the middle where you need your team to be strong. Right. Um, if you've got him there and you've got, uh, um, you know, the second baseman that you do. Uh, who who will not be protected in the lineup a little bit by that bat too, Jorge Polanco. Um, you know that that's that's pretty good on paper and and the support of your pitching. But is this anything more than like to me? This is just this is a two part act, and I think this is Act One. I mean, this is a man who can walk away without any sort of compensation to the team at all in October. Right. And, you right. know, and so I look at it as at the trade deadline this year you're going to see, and I'm just going to throw the names out there because these are the ones that always are there at the, at the trough, the Cubs, the Yankees, the, the Phillies, the Rangers, the Angels, and of course the Red Sox. Right. And they'll all be lining up to see where they are and where they are financially. And then, then we'll be able to see what can the twins get back and what mm -hmm. can they get in terms of future prospects, in terms of pitching right now, in terms of you know, younger players. And then is Royce Lewis, Who's supposed to be their starting shortstop, but uh, he got a total knee job done last year when he he injured his uh, ACL in March and was out all of last year. Is he ready to go by that time? So, you know, maybe maybe Correa loves it here. Maybe he loves you know whatever happens and they decides to be long term. But if this guy is still with this team in August, I feel like I should say like I'll do this. I don't want to put myself <laughs> in a position where I really have to do something I don't want to do. But I don't think uh, he'll be the, here. Maybe gritty. Will we do the gritty? I mean, that's. Like that's <laughs> do, you really, do you really want to see that, yeah. DT? <laughs> yeah, we do. You know, but I also think there's like the the chance of of him either it's him liking it here. Is this the end of everyone we're going to sign on the season's like right around the corner? So feels like there's like some momentum, and then if it doesn't, if it works, then it works. If it right. doesn't, then he's gone. He's gone anyway. You know, because right. he's, he's not old, but he's a little yeah. old. I know baseball is certainly you know probably. Wonderful because people can't play forever, but they can play yeah. a long time. He's looking for a big contract. I mean, he's already got a World yeah. Series. So, I mean, at some point, you know, now you just play for the money. You got the ring. Right. You know what I mean? I just, I, I think that, uh, again, I'm just going to go back to the pitching. I think that's where you get to control the game. It's where you get to control um, your destiny, really. Um, it's what's clutch. Um, and, again, this great, great infielder, great defense. But when you – when you come down to it, you need consistent pitching to to make it through the season. And we don't right. have that, haven't had it. Um, but I am, I have to say, I'm excited um, about baseball and about the upcoming season. And so, as uh, C. Willie says, let's play. That's right. Yeah, you know, it, it, it does. It makes, it makes it more interesting going into the season for, for sure. Hopefully not the last move they'll make, you know, before we, we start this whole thing out there. But uh, at least they tried to do something. And again, I think if nothing else, it's an interesting hand for them to play uh, from a franchise standpoint going forward. It, it's, it's a trade chip uh, bargaining chip for sure. Patrick Royce wrote an article that goes into greater length about this, but this is Scott Boris. You know, we, we had the, the Jerry Maguire movie where he had the agent as a you know guy with a heart. And Daryl, I don't know what sort of relationship you had with your, your agent as a player, Willie, I know you have an agent uh, today, yeah. you know, um, but okay. Scott Boris, isn't that guy. This, this is, <laughs> this is a guy who does great things for his, players but i don't think he's been good for the game i don't think you know i, I like people to get whatever they they you know to their maximum mm -hmm. ability but scott boris has is, is, is produced a dozen kirk cousins you know what i mean there's a lot of guys out there who have a lot of money who've never won a damn thing willie right. major yeah. league baseball and scott <laughs> boris has got a piece of all of them well not See, all of them but a lot of them yeah. he's, he's uh he wins a lot of money that's what he wins wins money <laughs> He is that guy. Money, well, money game. show me the money. As, you know, if we're talking Maguire. There we go. And Scott <laughs> Boris does that. That is for sure. Well, one guy who got shown the money, we think, is Daniil Hunter. Because we don't know for sure, other than we didn't hear that he didn't get the money. Yeah. So we're assuming that he did get the money. <laughs> yep. Um, there's no doubt the Vikings tried to trade Daniil Hunter uh, before he his money came due. He was doing $18 million roster bonus. It became guaranteed on Sunday. They would have had to have done something with him by Saturday because the league that lives on Sundays during the season doesn't do business on Sundays out of the season. So uh, we know that nothing happened with Neil one way or the other yesterday. So they owed him uh, at least a $6 million installment that has to be get before he gets to training camp on time. 
Uh, he's going to get paid. He's 27 years old. He's the NFL's youngest player to reach 50 career sacks. And yep. he would figure wow. to be uh, an edge rusher and, and Ed Donatel's 3-4 uh, front, a little different than he's played in the 4-3 the of the past. Is there any one of us who doubts that this guy can has the physical tools to do anything no, he wants to do? No, and I like this. I like this. I like his leadership. I like the passion he brings to the team. I like, you know, I, I like his story. I like how he has helped this team and build that. Um, you know, I think – there, there's a lot of other areas this team needs help in. Uh, offensive line, for one, you know, a, a shutdown uh, in the secondary uh, to help. I think these types of things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. I think uh, I wasn't going to bring that one up. But I think, uh, you know, the draft is really going to get interesting. And I think I, I would have guessed, I would have guessed, and they still might, that they would have done an edge rusher on um, – uh, 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 the first round of the draft, and maybe they won't now, and maybe we're seeing a little. I think it makes it more one. likely, Carla. I mean, I'm sorry, but I honestly think it makes it more likely that they take for an competition. Edge for, no, the other side. Who's going to play the other side? Mm. Well, I, I mean, I yeah, I mean, I guess there's that, but but I also think um, locking him down is a is a big deal for the leadership on that defense. So yeah, maybe they will, but I I also I think they're going to go with a a defensive player in the first round, no doubt about it. Um, so, uh, I, I just, I like it. I like the move. I like him as a pe player, as a person and the leadership and the culture he brings to this team. And mm -hmm. especially with all the changes again, I'm going to go back to my favorite word today, apparently consistency. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, I, I think that, you know, you're, you're going to a new setup here, but there isn't a, another guy for the three. I mean, we've got an inside guy. We got Daniel Hunter. We need that other edge. I think at number 12, even with the other kid from Michigan, you know, rupturing his uh, his Achilles and taking himself out of the uh, a potential of being one of the first five picks of the draft, there's still three or four guys. This draft is not – they say it's weak for quarterbacks. It's not weak for linemen. I mm -hmm. mean, the stuff that those kids did at the NFL Combine this year was you know, not just the defensive tackles, the defensive ends was eye-popping. And, and and look what Dallas did last year. Their whole draft was defense, and, and they were right. competitive. I don't think you can wait for kids for three, four years anymore. I think right. if, you're coming, if you're coming out of Alabama or some of these other major programs, you've got to be as close to NFL ready as possible, huh? So no? I, real quick, I guess my thought process where my mind is at is that maybe you would still entertain free agency or, or a trade for that other edge. I mean, versus the draft. I, don't, I guess that's where okay. I was going. But I think that's fair. This, for, this veteran, draft, for veteran staff, for veteran this, status. This draft is extremely deep in defensive ends. That's Correct. I mean, that might be where Tim's thinking about what yeah. that defensive end. It makes sense. And it also makes a ton of sense to sign Daniel Hunter. I mean, he's yes. a tremendous player, tremendous athlete, still young. You know, you look at what Von Miller's doing, he's had some kind of ups and downs, but you know, he just re-signed. I think he went to the Bills last week for you know for a boatload of money. So I mean yeah, good for his him. Checkbook's up. <laughs> uh, there's no doubt his checkbook. I think he's he's, he's got he's, two he's, Super Bowls. He's multiple financial planners to keep track yeah. of all that money, but good for him. But right. I think you know it, it is it makes sense. It makes a lot of sense to sign um Daniel Hunter and hopefully he can get back to that um, that form he's had in the past. Yeah, the late Denny Green used to say a lot of really interesting things, and, and, I, and I mean that in a sincere way. And mm -hmm. one time we got into a discussion about man strength, and Denny Green talked about how he goes, you get your man strength at about 27. The personal note, I'm still waiting. Uh, but he said, you know, players that he goes, he coaches, he goes, these guys come in at 20, 21, 22, he said, but about 27, 28 years old, they get their man strength and they've got that, you know, to the early thirties. And he talked about players that were just coming to their man strength. And I keep thinking about Daniel Hunter. He looks like a comic book character or something they yeah. drew, drew it at Marvel, you know, uh, a superhero. Um, and when he's healthy, you know, he, you know, would you, would you rather have, if they're all healthy, would you rather have TJ Watt, Joey Bosa than, than, than Daniel Hunter? I no. wouldn't. No, absolutely not. Maybe Bosa is yeah. younger, but I mean, I think that, yeah. I mean, it's just kind of, uh, you know, you got to go with Daniel Hunter. He's, he's a tremendous player, tremendous talent, and um, just kind of start from there. It'll be, this is Quezzy's, you know, his first run, you know, so it mm -hmm. makes sense what he's, what he's doing, even the signing of Kurt, much to, um, you know, see Willie's chagrin, you know, you got it's It's a business decision, so. It'll be it'll be fun to see what he does um, with the draft and with the remaining piece because free agency is going to get a little looser now that you got yes. the you know the the thirty million and the fifty million guys to say how about which seems crazy you know how about a guy we're just going to pay him ten million you know or five mm -hmm. million bucks so but you can you can do 
a lot with them. And there's some uh, some really some really really good players that are still out there. And I yeah. I think I think with um, the draft coming up and the Kirk Cousins signing, I I think you really got to look at that offensive line, and then that'll make it seem a little <laughs> bit smarter if um, if they can fill some of those gaps because right now that's that's where the help is right where they need it right now. Right. Well, Carl, well, I would I would say too. Excuse me, well, but I, I think that that's where I'm looking at free agency. Any money that's freed up because that's hard. I mean, right now we don't produce enough off, offensive linemen who are at the NFL ready. If they've got a couple of years right. with the team and they can step in there and play, I think it's I, I think it's easier to come in and play corner or, or defensive end uh, right now as a younger player than a display offensive line. Absolutely, without a doubt. Um, but I think uh, back to Daniil Hunter, he he reminds me of more of a, a Byron Buxton. Uh, when he's in there, you know what you're going to get. <laughs> And you, he's shown it. I mean, he's he's next mm -hmm. level. Uh, but to your point, Tim, yeah, uh, I think you go out in free agency and try to fill um, the the offensive line or even that other edge rusher. Uh, I just think it when you when you bring in a young guy, you draft somebody that 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 takes a lot of work. It's a lot of learning. That's a huge learning curve from the college to the NFL. You know, you can put a guy in a rookie in on one play and say, hey, just go hard you know, at the quarterback or whatever. But in terms of reading running backs and stuff like that, you got to be able to pick up what they're doing. And, you know, sometimes when you run out of college, you don't get that. So you, I think on the other end, you get a, you got a Daniel Hunter on one end and you go find yourself another veteran uh, who's been in the league for a few years, um, you know, maybe still a backup then you can pay him a decent amount of money to bring bring in. I think that's how you do it. But you, you do that on offensive line too. A uh, guy that can step in and play right now. So, but you still need a quarterback. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> so let's look at the uh, the playoffs begin tonight in the NBA. If they don't, but they do. I mean, our Timberwolves begin a stretch of real. Well, maybe you can say it even began over this weekend. They somehow missed Giannis, and they've had a really weird thing where the Timberwolves seem to get a lot of teams without their best player or players. And I'm not complaining. And they, they uh, took you know, it. I don't, I don't, but yeah. we've, we've, we've gotten it, doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Eat, like, yeah, matter. I mean, you, right. you roll your squad out there. We're going to roll our squad out there. We played without D Lo. We played without Ant. We played we someone played without, you know, the big cat, you know. So I'm, right. I'm like, oh, I'm sorry that, you know, Tim's hurt, but the show must go on. Right. You, know, you quit Carl making excuses like for those Steve teams, Tim. You quit making yeah. excuses for them teams. Don't, don't even need to because it's real tonight because right. Dallas appears to be 100% healthy. We're a game and a half behind them in the standings. We'll play them twice this week. Tonight at Dallas. Don't forget about the sandwich game, Phoenix, best record in the NBA Wednesday night. We don't and care. Then, and then Dallas again. I love it. Let's go. We don't care. Timberwolves right. is real, man. They don't care. They trash the furniture. They're stealing food out of the cabinets and they're keeping all their lunch money. They ain't nobody, <laughs> D Lo, all them, Ant, they start, they starting to, they get swag now. They know that they can go in other people's homes and play and they know they can protect their house. And I'm so proud of them cats, man. That they're they're showing their swag, they got their chest out, and they saying what they said with their whole chest, like we said down south. Say it with your whole chest, you know. Get out there and just put up. And they got a great coach that knows how to, you know, fit these guys in when they need them, rest them when they need to be rested. And they're playing smart basketball, man. And I don't I don't care if there's a team without their best player. We beat them with with their best player, and we beat them without their best players, you know. So we don't this care. Is this is reminding me of a caucus right now, but uh, <laughs> one of our caucuses. <laughs> I, I will, <laughs> I'll say this: like they are so fun to watch, and they are yep. playing um, fantastic, confident basketball. Like I just am so excited for these guys down the stretch. Um, best I think we've seen in I don't know how many seasons. I mean, it's just they are are they're having fun. They're having fun yeah. playing with that swagger, and and the that that I'm gonna say it. What, what word? Consistency. Consistency. <laughs> and there we go. I got it in every sport. Bring it. Ding, all ding, day. Ding, ding, all day, folks. I'm here all day. <laughs> and so um, I think that, that that's what is excellent about it. And I'm very pumped for them. Well, if you're to watch the game tonight, you got to find a BSN X because mm -hmm. uh, BSN, Valley Sports North, is going to have your Minnesota Wild on there while the um, – Wolves are taking on Dallas. The Wild are going to be taking on Las Vegas, the team that eliminated them from the playoffs uh, last year. Wild coming off a win. Um, I spent the last week 
just uh, giving C. Willie all the props for all the the the, the long distance calls he made that have uh, played out as he said that they would. Uh, one of the things I wish the I wish the hockey gals were on today because I said months ago. Marcus Foligno has outplayed his role as a fighter on this team, and they need to get somebody to protect him, and they need to get somebody else to take that that work and end up in the box. Well, they got him on on uh, Sunday. They their Saturday. They traded for a guy named uh, Delorier. Oh, Nick Delorier right. comes from uh, Anaheim, and he's got ten fights so far in the uh, <laughs> NHL. That's ties for tops in the league. <laughs> and he here's his comment about Marcus Foligno. I want him to be in the ice. I'll be in the box. I'll do the five minutes. I think that's what I bring, energy, being a safe player defensively because he is good on the penalty kill. Right. I want to be reliable. Let those young bucks roll and have a free head. Um, this is this is a wise move. It cost a yes. third-round draft choice. Uh, Delorier understands what his role is coming in here. I'm not advocating fighting, but what happens to us is teams still take this team's lunch money. Right. And they, it can't happen. And we can't lose Marcus Felino five minutes at a time or a game misconduct or a broken hand because he's mm-hmm. too important. Yep. Yeah, I like his comment, too, when they, in the interview and they asked him about his skill set. He goes, what skill set? <laughs> <laughs> he said, I'm here to fight, man. That's that's not a skill set. Oh, he's an <laughs> gritty. That's what they said. Not, yeah, not the dance gritty. Gritty. Right. He is an enforcer. You know, every right. team... Every sport needs an enforcer. You need someone who enjoys a little bit of chest to chest, a little bit of eye contact, you know, someone who's hustling around to pick his guys up and do that. And, and it certainly sounds like, I mean, I was intimidated just listening to his comments. I'm like, I, I know. Can't, I can't, like, you see him coming down the sideline. Right. <laughs> when he I comes out, nothing. You know, when he, come out, when he <laughs> comes off the bench, yeah, when he comes off the bench, there's no question why he's there. You just got to, all you're trying to figure out, who is he going to take out? Yeah. <laughs> to that, I predict that he will not, the first period will not end without him getting in a scrap with somebody oh, yeah. from Las Vegas. They'll put him out, they'll do the thing of yeah. lean on their sticks, and they won't look at each other, but they'll talk. And as soon as the puck is dropped, the sticks and the gloves go down, and they do their dance, and both Let's teams will get that message. If you're going to mess with our guys, we'll mess with your guys. We got a guy. We got a guy. And, <laughs> and I think I think just strategically, this is great. They're planning for the stretch. They're planning for long term here. They're they're going to go the distance. And and again, just another great team to watch. And and they're playing some some great hockey. And um, I, this is a great move. I'm excited about it. I chuckled when I saw the comments too. It's just um, it ain't bragging if you back it up. I mean, as Kid Rock says. So yeah. I mean, I think um, there's some other colorful terms in there, but right. um, but uh, it's. To, to me, it's a very smart move and, and really freeing up such an incredible player. Um, have somebody else do the uh, do the time for the enforcement. So, yeah. And I'm, another Bugard, another another, uh, you know, our our guy that's going to enforce. Right. And, and happy for Felino that he, you know, his work has been recognized, that he's done both roles. But he's right. he's he's really a valuable guy. And if you lose him mm-hmm. for an extended period of time. Even the broken hand or something, that's something you lose that presence. You lose that swag, right? right. He, he brings it on the ice and off the ice. And I think that that's really uh, important. Um, so we got a couple minutes left. I don't know if you guys spent any time at all watching uh, the NCA wrestling tournament. I, I spend more time watching that wow. than I do the. Did you, did you tune in a little bit, Will? Yeah, I did, man. You had me come I had, look, I had to watch it. First of all, this was his last match. I had to watch him. And uh, my God. Yeah. Yeah, he was he was epic, man. That cat is that cat is good. I can't wait to see him. Man. I'm not a big huge wrestling fan, but I I watch him. Yeah, best best to have done it, man. I mean, just what yeah. a career and what a what a player. The again, just fun. Uh, he's having fun, and and it's just it's just good to see the the genuine competition. But this guy just eats everything up. It just doesn't matter. I mean, he's just best to have ever done yeah. it. Sorry, I mean he is. Um, yeah, I think and, so. he's, and he's taking his time. You know, it's nice to see such a young individual taking time for uh, decision, their, their future. Right. I mean, this guy has so many paths he could go down and um, he took the time to do it to make the decision that's best for him. And just more power to him. Very proud of him. Very good. Um, just good person. Good athlete. And again, having some fun. Yeah, he's done everything. I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, just might as well go out and make some money now. Yeah. But I, I, to see him with this guy, the, the one that got, what was the guy named he wrestled? Col- Colton Col- Schultz. Col- Colton Schultz. That guy was massive, man. And to see just his his 
speed and how, and, you know, how Gabe just, oh my God, I just see how he moved and that he's so fluid, you know, it's like, good Lord. I mean, it's like he, he's like head and shoulders above these other cats, man. But, and they're great. So what does that yeah. make him? So Schultz came in uh, as the number two seeded wrestler and had a 26 and 0 record. He looks like a cross right. between John Belushi and Fred Flintstone. <laughs> I know. So he's not that guy that, but, but man, you see him on, on, on the mat and Gable got him right off the bat. Really Shoot. smart. Came out five that's seconds, cool. just attacked, got the takedown right away, which is something in heavyweight wrestling right. you almost like never see, but that's something Gable can do with his speed. And after that, you, it was just strength on strength, you know, man on man. These two, and this this uh, this Colton Schultz, unless somebody else comes out of nowhere, he'll just probably he'll probably win the next two heavyweight right, championships. Exactly. But Gable did, you know, and he, he embraced the role. With the NIL came along at the right time, where he was able to get yeah. compensated for what he did this year, and he should have. Yes. Yeah. And and but he did it all right. Took the pictures with right. everybody. Took the videos. Gets his degree. Right. You know, now he'll leave the university with his degree and he'll go into uh, like uh, WWE. Well, and, and and they'll create a character for him and see what that's all about. And I don't think he's got right now. I don't think he has a desire to do MMA. I think right. he'd rather go towards Hollywood than MMA. And I hope I hope he gets to do whatever he wants to do. Yeah, his dominance is his dominance is so um, fun and impressive to watch. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think that's the piece to me. It's like I mean, it's like. When someone dominates a, a phenomenal team or a player, that's always like, I was like, God, it's so. Right. And when I watch him in the Olympics, I was like, well, I guess it's over. And then he finds a way to win. Right. You know, over <laughs> to his match, you know. So, I mean, it's just, it's, it's fun to no. see him lay a, he's really laid a true foundation. So I don't, I don't think he's really going to probably wrestle a super long time. I think he's, to me, I don't, I don't know. I haven't seen him talk a lot, but it seems like he has a confidence that, I mean, he's, he's probably looking at the, the rock as like his, um, his template for like right. how we'd like to, you know, live his life, be involved. He seems like a good person. You know, right. I don't, I don't know. I mean, he seems like a very good person. So uh, we'll see how everything, um, you know, plays out with him, but uh, it, he's just a joy to, uh, to watch. Well, one and it comes I, prepared. Oh, go ahead too, Billy. No, I was just going to say the one thing I learned, you know, I always try to pick up stuff when I, cause I've just started watching wrestling and hockey and stuff this past couple of years, but I learned that you get, you get points for escapes. And I did not know that. Uh, that's how that's how I was listening, Tim. I had it. I didn't just yeah. watch it with the volume down like I normally do. I just I try to learn without list without hearing. So I thought I bet but I didn't know that much about wrestling. Yeah. So how did I'm get no, points? I'm no expert just, either. But yeah. he, he, like, he, he, he got a point for an escape. The Colton. That's how he got this. Uh, got the this. only points that uh, yeah. that that uh, he gave up. Stevenson gave up the whole the whole tournament yeah. was escapes. escapes. And, was and like, he's not. You know, there, there's other heavyweights who have been longer you know, taller mm -hmm. than him and spread out mm -hmm. the weight a little bit more. So he's got to move around and be real athletic, you know, keep yeah. using his weight and different things. And he did that. He was all mm -hmm. over Colton Schultz. I hadn't seen Cable expend that much effort on top, you know, trying to keep that man down to where he right. got what they call riding time. Um, he, he covered all the bases in that match on Saturday. He made sure mm -hmm. he was going to win. He wrestled hard. He wrestled smart. Yep. And he wanted to make sure that he ended in the right note. And he, he did that. Um, March Madness continues. We're up against the top of the hour. I know Carla's got uh, some traveling she's got to do. Um, I, I The Midwest, I could not – I did really well in the South and the East and whatever the other one was. I've got like one wrong in one bracket and two in another. My Midwest is like completely blown apart. Mm -hmm. And and part of that was Iowa State taking down Wisconsin. Yeah. And, Daryl, I'm imagining you know Gabe Kelsher better than most of us do because I would have thought think that did, did – uh, did he play on any teams with your son? Yeah, yeah, I know Gabe. He's a great young man. I've known him since about sixth grade, so I was very, very happy for him last night. It was yeah, great here's so weird that, I mean, here's this kid with such a great shooter, great shooter, great shooter, got into this thing at the U of M where he just couldn't make a basket. I remember one road game at Oklahoma State where he had it going, and they kept feeding him, and I'm going, there it is, there it is. And then the next game it was, where is it? And <laughs> and we saw that again yesterday. I mean, he, he got that back at Iowa State, and uh, – you know, nice to see him take down the Badgers. No, absolutely, absolutely, great game, great. Uh, and we don't. No one in Minnesota complains when the Badgers lose. We're kind of nope. like, yeah, nope. we're nope. good. Yeah. Even, though the, from yeah. Wisconsin. Yeah. Yeah. Even yeah. though the kid plays for Iowa, he goes, yeah, I've never liked Wisconsin. Yeah, I'm a Minnesota <laughs> I'm man. Minnesota. I'm from Minnesota, so I never liked them. I was like, dang. 
<laughs> yeah. It was too bad when Ben started bringing in the shooting guards right away. He put his name in the transfer portal. They all did, you know, whatever mm -hmm. it comes with that. But I'm happy to see that he was able to to, to find himself because we all knew that right. he was that sort of shooter. And uh, he, he still continues. We'll see what Iowa State uh, can do from here. Uh, Willie, are you traveling this week? Are you working this week? No, man, I'm I'm, I'm good till April 1st. All right. And Senator, you, your big legislation is the uh, sports gambling bill, and that's uh, moving forward. It's it's moving forward. Discussions are ongoing. That's all we can ask for at this point. And it's our first deadline week. So uh, as long as the House does uh, their job and gets it through all the policy committees, uh, we'll be good. Uh, so I'm I'm looking forward to it. I don't know how you do what you do, but thank you for doing yeah. what you do. <laughs> thank you, Carla. Yeah. Yes. No and DT, what's happening at Boulder Options? Oh, things are good. We have a big board meeting to, uh, tomorrow afternoon, kind of, you know, recap last year, moving into this year, do some strategic planning, some stuff like that, and hopefully a little bit of expansion. So um, we're, you know, things are going in the right direction. So if you're going through with March Madness withdrawal, um, Willie won't because he's not watching yet. He doesn't start yet, but he's getting close. We 16, man. I, <laughs> I mean, I, I dabble in it, but I don't, I don't get into it until I get to Sweet 16. When I get to Sweet 16, then I'll even... I'll pull a bracket together there because then, then I've seen enough to where I can make a. Yeah, I, I just get I'll the be interested out, in but... seeing your uh, see Willie bracket. <laughs> right. All right, and and uh, so if you're doing withdrawal about that, you've got your choices tonight. You got the Timberwolves in action, seven thirty start against uh, the Mavs, and of course your Wild taking on the Vegas Golden Knights at seven o'clock. A lot to talk about tomorrow. In the meantime, this is Let's Play Every Day, the show where we encourage you to get off the sideline, get in the game because well, that's where the 